Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph exponential functions. Now, I'm not going to get into everything on exponential functions as far as graphing. I just want to kind of give you a basic little overview and then how we're going to kind of graph in this course. So, you know, the first thing when we're looking at exponential equations, there's a couple different ways you'll see that exponential equations are going to be represented. The most basic way to represent exponential equation is y equals b to the x. And what I'm going to explore is going to be y equals 2 to the x. But there's other values that are going to have effects on the graph. And this would kind of be like our most basic, which we call like our parent graph, right? With very little, with no transformations. That's like the pure form of the graph. Um, but we can also get into transformations and what different effects these values are going to have. So here is your basic transformation graph. Um, and basically what we have is, just like we've talked about, I like to confer, um, I like to compare this to the quadratic. You know, quadratic is y equals x squared, right? That was the pure form of a quadratic graph. And then when we applied transformations, we had a times x minus h squared plus k. So I'm not going to go through all of them, or at least write them down, but I will you know, kind of compare them. The a's are going to have the same thing. That's going to be dealing with your stretching and your compressing of your graph. Your h's are inside of your function, so that's going to be shifting left or right. Um, and your k's are outside of your function, so that's going to be shifting your graph up or down. But the basic thing we need to do is be able to just identify what does the shape of the graph look like, and then how can we kind of like apply our operations, or at least some of the basic things. So the best thing I always like to do is start students with you know, a table. And I know you guys can use graphing technology or computers, and, that, and that's basically the preferred way, I would say, to graphing um, exponential functions. However, when you have a test or you have something where you're not allowed to use technology, or maybe you can do this work with much quicker than actually having to graph it, um, just using transformations can really help you out a lot. So I'm going to use some independent values. I'm just going to make them up to create a table. Uh, create a table of values. Now, basically, I'll plug these in. And usually, students have trouble when I'm plugging in negative numbers. 2 to the negative second. Just remember, with negative exponents, that's going to be rewritten as a reciprocal, which will be rewritten as 1 fourth. So that's going to be 1 fourth. This would be 1 half. Anything raised to the 0 power is going to be 1, 2, and 4. And what you come up with is a basic graph. It has a y-intercept at 1. And 0, comma 1. And here's what our graph looks like. So there's a couple things I want to go through because I'm not using technology to kind of show this to you. What you can see is as this graph continues going to the left, it's going to get smaller and smaller fractions. Basically, what's happening is it's approaching 0. It's never going to get to negative because even though how large of a negative exponent, it's still just going to be a fraction, and, but it's never actually going to be 0. You, know, you could have 2 to the negative 1 millionth power. But that's still, it's going to be really, really close to 0, but it's not actually going to be 0. And then you can see as these values get larger and larger, this graph is going to increase very fast, right? So that's kind of the idea of the exponential graph. And a lot of times where students will also get stuck is, well, then what about you know, exponential graph? What happens when we have y equals e to the x, right? And what do these other values kind of change? So a couple things I'm just going to kind of highlight, because obviously I'll get into my examples in my other videos. The main thing is when you have these basic parent graphs, the y-intercept is at 1. Remember, e represents a constant. It does not represent a variable. Um, so therefore, any, any exponential function that's in this format is going to have a y-intercept that's at 1, and it's going to go in this direction, or it's going to go in this shape. However, once we start applying transformations, then everything starts changing. So if you have an a, you know, if a is negative, just like when a was negative over here, that's going to reflect over the x-axis. So you would take this graph and reflect it. Um, also, if a is you know, a number, that actually it's a multiplier. So if your original x-intercept here is 1, when you multiply it by a, like let's say 5, let's say this is like you know, 5 times e to the x, now my new y-intercept is 1 or is 5. And again, I'll get through examples on that. And I would definitely you know, practice along that with uh, you know, using an online computer system or calculator. And you'll be able to see that how that works. Um, in the same respect, if I know what my value of h is, you know, if it's positive, that means I'm shifting it to the left. If it's negative, that means I'm shifting this graph so many units to the right. And, and k is going to be your vertical transformation. So if k is positive, you're going up. If k is negative, you're going down. And again, what I usually like to do is I like to find the y-intercept first. 
So you know, if I don't have an A, my y-intercept is at 0, 1. And all I do is, based on my transformations of H and K, I just shift it left and right. Okay? Um, there is one other thing, two other things I want to mention. Depending on how what value of y is, if y is large, right? If y gets larger, then this graph is going to actually increase faster. And if y is smaller, then it's actually going to decrease slower. Um, now, what happens when y gets really small, or what happens if we have x is negative? Because this isn't something that we really talk about with quadratics, because quadratics are vertically symmetrical. But if we're, if we're switching this around, and I'm going to write y, um, let's write this in here, y equals a times b. And let's say there's a number in front of the x. Okay. If there's a number in front of the x, now that kind of goes through different things, but I do want you to understand that a reflects over the x-axis. So this value c is going to reflect about the y-axis. And that's also going to have an effect on the stretching and the compressing of the graph. But for right now, I just want to kind of go over that's the basics. Make sure that when you're graphing, you know the general form and then be able to apply the transformations. And then obviously, as we work through our examples, you'll and um, you'll get a better idea as far as how those transformations and everything work, as well as how to use you know, technology to help verify your answers. Thanks.